full disclosure before I start this video. This video is not sponsored by Bixby. That means I pay 100% out of pocket for this product. That just means one thing. The opinions and views today are gonna to be totally unbiased. That means by the end of this video, if I like the product, I recommend it. But if I don't and I think it's trash, I'm gonna tell y'all it's trash. Let's get to it. What's going on everyone? My name is Ray Nell Roy. Welcome back to my channel, Fishing Trips. And I have a special episode for y'all today because guess what? We got a new toy for the family. A Bixby, that's right y'all. We got a trolling motor to go on a Hobie for really two reasons. Reason number one, my legs, okay? I'm in my 40s, I can't do any more 10 mile round trips, eight hours a day paddling around the marshes and coming home and not being able to feel my legs for a week. I can't do it anymore, y'all, I'm sorry. Number two is content. I believe this actual product right here is gonna help me better my content for y'all in your viewing pleasure. So this video is gonna have three goals and three parts. Part number one, do an unboxing, let you know what comes in the box. Part number two, do an install to install the Bixby on my Hobie. And part number three, we're gonna hit the water and test it out. Personally, I think everything's gonna go smoothly, cause if not, we're gonna have problem, Bixby. Let go. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and talk about specs. Now, the particular kit I selected is called the Bixby K1 Angler Pro Outboard Kit. Yeah, we, we fancy, y'all. So if you go to the Bixby website, um, pretty much, like I said, once again, it's called the Bixby K1 Angler Pro Outboard Kit. Um, it's a beast, man. This is like the newest, latest, and greatest from Bixby. Um, they had a couple of motors. Um, this K1 is now the, the smaller one, but it's you know, more quieter, um, packs the same punch with power. The main thing is this battery though, y'all. This battery, I believe it's called the PP768 battery, and it's a beast, you know what I'm saying? Because the thing I worried about between, you know, what particular kit to select was battery life, you know, because I don't want to have to be out there worrying about my battery. So I went with this particular kit, as you can see, Right here, that price currently right now, $1,599. That's right, y'all. It's it's an investment, okay? It's an investment in my future for this channel. It's an investment in my legs because I like to walk. All right, so let's talk about this battery and why is it what it is. Another thing is something else. Um, this particular one is the kit only, okay? You still have to purchase an actual an adapter, right? Now, the particular adapter I selected is the power pole adapter for my Hobie Outback right here and right here. This is what it comes with. Um, right now, this is retailing for um, $199, okay? So like I said, they have multiple adapters. I believe it's 20 different adapters you can select to kind of fit your particular outboard or your particular um, boat. Now, something else I'm gonna show y'all real quick is the battery life, okay? One second here. Now with the battery life itself, blow it up a little bit for y'all. It's subjective, right? Meaning it could be different based off of the weight of your kayak, the weight of you, how much equipment you have, and etc. You know, I'm a I'm a big boy, man. I'm I'm standing standing strong at 220. You know what I'm saying? 220 muscle. But you know, also with my Hobie, um, I have my Hobie as you can see uh, with paddle. It's coming in at 255 pounds. I'm showing. Um, in addition, I have a lot of camera equipment. So I believe they probably tested out these speeds and weight just probably like this bare kayak. So it's gonna be different for everyone. But for particularly Hobie Outback, cause that's what we're gonna install today. It says that it can troll at 0 0.6 miles an hour for 22 hours. 22 hours, let me tell you something. If I'm out on the water for 22 hours, please call the Coast Guard and send help. It's not intentional. All right, now mid speed, um, four miles an hour for eight hours. Okay, I think that's like the natural trolling speed when we pedal is about three four miles an hour like i'm really pedaling hard maybe 60 seconds max before i get tired and burnt out um top speed have 5.6 um currently for two and a half hours okay two and a half hours at top speed this particular k1 kit um because it has the pp 768 larger motor i'm sorry larger battery um has a 13 speed like bixie has 12 speeds but this gives you like a warp speed at 13 so we'll test that out i might be going back to the feature y'all so yeah man that's pretty much it now as far as the kayak itself and the box itself um like i showed y'all right here this is my power pole adapter super light super light and right here is the other part and this is just literally going to sit on my hobie a few screws wham bam thank you ma'am it should be done man i've been watching some youtube videos on how to do this 
realistically everybody says it might take like 15 minutes to do install you know i'm filming so it might take a little bit longer so let me put this to the side in one second y'all next is the pp pp 768 battery so this is the powerhouse of the actual kayak um it looks like it comes with a kill switch right um the kill switch i believe is going to go right here oh look at that all right cool so it kills right there you'll test it to your pdf um your arm anything on your body to make sure that if you fall off it's not going to keep going um comes with a nice battery i mean as much money as we spend on this you better have a free battery in here um, we got some lubrication for the connectors on the battery let me check this out got the remote control here nice nice okay okay now apparently they have a kill switch too just boom stop they have three speeds for reverse um and also this is how you control it going forward um like i say this particular battery gives you 13 speeds another thing is you can go directly from zero to top speed by pressing this button twice we'll test it out later and get a sync um this battery man i don't know how much it weighs but it got some weight on it oh yeah 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 definitely got some weight on it i would estimate maybe like 25 pounds they have another um battery prior to this one um it floats it floats but like i said the reason i didn't get the other one um this one gives you twice the power twice the power as the other battery kit you can get and quite honestly like extra 300 dollars more twice the power of battery life um this right here i don't know what this is let's see here okay yeah this is the adapter to so just plug it in plug and play boom you know what i'm saying there's no you know jump cables just bam plug it into your wall outlet it's good to go now i know on the other smaller battery they have a solar panel option for it as well for this one the 768 i'm looking on the website and i don't believe they have an option for a solar panel yet for this big one but when they do i'm definitely going to be looking out for it all right y'all so now we got the battery out the way hold on y'all move this out the way oh yeah also it came with a little paracord to you know pull up your motor some little screws make sure we don't lose those right now and here is the star of the show i mean both of these are stars quite honestly I would say the battery is the star because the battery is everything. You can have a great motor, but if you don't have a strong battery, it's not going to really take you nowhere. I'm super excited. So let's go ahead and open up this Bixby. Once again, this is the K1. I believe initially when the company started, they had a J1 motor, then went to J, a J2 motor. Now they have the K1. And they do have an option as well where you can get the old battery with the new motor the k1 motor as well all right it has a little quick start guide there we go perfect and also hold on the battery had this huge quick start guide as well look at that man photos they dumb it down for people like myself because you know me all right so let's see what happened nice little phone yeah, man, they went out. Ooh, okay. They went all out with this. See, they're not cheap with their packaging, you know what I'm saying? Don't be ordering no $1,600 trolling motor and come in a Ziploc bag. Let's see what we got. Ooh, ooh, okay. Oh, this is, this is fancy, y'all. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what? It's about, I don't know, it feels like maybe like, five or six pounds that's it i'm not gonna lie man my first my first reaction or thought looking at this because the propeller as you can see right there the propeller look like it's maybe two to three inches i'm a little skeptical i'm not gonna lie i'm skeptical that this little bitty propeller is gonna be able to push my kayak and all 220 pounds of me on the water if we get faster than one mile per hour, I'll be impressed, to be honest with you. All right, cool. So that's the Bixby. 
Let's see what else we got here. So, look here. If you want to scan me? Go ahead, y'all can scan me. Oh, never mind. It's white it out and my screws to connect. And that's lot news those right now. So that's it, y'all. So that's everything that comes in the box. Um, next step or part two of this video, we're gonna head down to the garage and do the install. So far, so good. So far, two thumbs up, Bisbees, on the unboxing. We, we doing good so far. All right, y'all, see y'all in the garage. Let go. All right, y'all, first things first, we're gonna install our Bixby power adapter. This is the power pole adapter. It works with the J2 and the K1 motor. Um, first thing we're gonna do is install our mount plate. Um, it comes with four little screws right here. I already put three of them in there to kind of speed up the process for the video. But we'll just do one. Kind of screw in. And once again, this is a 2021 Hobie Outback Mirage. Nice and tight. We put our plate directly over the four bolts. Now something else I just had to learn um, beforehand is when you get these screws, right, the stem part needs to face upward. If you try to face it downward, it's not gonna be able to screw in. I found out that the hard way. So turn it upside down. Also start off with the back plates first. So pick it up slightly, you put it in a little cubby and go spin. Down she goes. That perfect. I'm just realizing. Okay, when you do these, the back ones towards your stern, don't tighten all the way. So let's come back up a little bit. So you want to allow both to get into that little slot before you tighten it down. So I kind of got to do it simultaneously. All right, I'm not gonna lie, the back ones took a little bit of effort because you gotta kind of wiggle, wiggle. Make sure that's nice and straight. The front ones are easy, quite honestly. Yeah, front ones are real nice and quick. Then face upwards. I got four little hex screws, which I'm assuming, of course, We'll go on top. There we go. All right, I had to angle a little bit. All right, so that's on there nice and tight. All right, y'all, so next up, we're gonna install the Bixby motor. Um, once again, there's a spacer on the Bixby, so if you're using the K1 motor, you gotta get some pliers and remove the spacer. Like, I got some pliers, just kinda pull this out, okay? That's the only way it's gonna be able to fit directly in like this. Well, make sure you go the right way. You have little, Island lid right here. You want to face it towards your stern or your bow. And your big swing needs to be facing jet towards your stern like that. Now, off camera, I'm noticing that the mounts, it's different sizes. I thought it was all the same size. There's two shorter ones and two longer ones. I'm trying to figure out where does this fit? Back or the front? And that one fits. And that one fits, okay, okay. So your shorter screws, right? You're gonna have two shorter screws. They're both gonna go on the left-hand side. Where it says Bixby, two short screws gonna go on the left. And the longer, longer ones would go towards the front. And I would say not to tighten it too tight or you'll mess up your Power pole. There go. All right. So yeah, a little tricky on that one because 
like I said, there's two smaller ones that go on the same side towards the back, right here where you're just at, and then two longer ones, your screws will go towards the front. But after you do that, you're good to go. Yeah, you're good to go. All right, so next up, we gotta install the motor towards the back. I'm gonna break it the first day. All right, y'all, so we have our big swing motor connected nice and tight. You wanna line up this part right here towards the back. It has two screws here and here. Took them off. So we just wanna sit that in the cubby. And put it in. There we go. It's one. Put this other one over here. It's two. No, it's not straight though. See, this one's all the way tight, but this one's not getting there. There we go. Kind of put a little pressure on it. There we go. All right. So big speed <sighs> motor installed. Not gonna lie, it was a little bit harder than I anticipated, but just like when you, you know, set up a tent when you go camping for the first time, it takes practice. Now, right now, they sell like some adapters where you can put like a handle and control it, but I just use my rudder to be able to do that. So to stop it from moving, this should be a clip. So where's my clip at? And I think it's this right here. I got another set of bolts that I have no clue what to do with. All right, I'm gonna have to watch the video. So I believe um, once you put the little thing right here, boom, locks into place. So a little pin drops in there and keeps it straight, forward facing. Now also, um, yeah, that's, that's nice. There's another Allen wrench. Oh, that's what this wrench is for. I was wondering, there was another little wrench in here. Apparently like you can, okay, not that one, right here. There's two of them, one right here and one right here. If you loosen it, you can make your little pole go up or like down, if you wanna make it go deeper. You know, I'm trying to figure out a good thing because I, I marsh fish a lot. So a lot of that water is 12 inches. So if I can adjust it to get that sweet spot where it's underwater just enough that can push me but not hit the bottom. And like you can see right here, it has a little clip, okay? We need to figure out um, what this other piece goes to. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't know right now. And we'll work on our bungee cord next. So like I say, this right here, boom. Now the water is gonna stop it from going into this little slot right here, little clip. The clip is for to kind of help it stay in place when it goes into reverse. They say you just get your remote, double click on your remote, it goes into high mode and it pushes in. So it should be like, like that. Allegedly, okay? All right, y'all, so let me um, touch up on my instructions figure out why I'm gonna do this wire, figure out this mystery nuts and bolt, and um, keep it moving, we're almost there. All right, y'all, so we have the mount set up. Let's put this battery to the side. I'm put a little electrical gel. We'll put a little dab. Just a little electrical gel. Help fight erosion. As you know, salt water kills so water kills everything. There we go. There we go. It's in there. There we go. Nice and tight. Just like that. All right. It's my magnetic leash. Just put that on there, Mike. 
that bit. Okay. Your remote is made it to your PP768. Okay, right. To check whether your remote and power pack are already synced, activate your power pack by using your kill switch. Check. Then press the stop button only. Okay, I heard two beeps. If you hear a series of beeps, then your remote is already synced to your power pack. Bet. All right, y'all, let's talk about the pulley system, okay? And how we can get this thing to come up and down, right? I'm gonna start with, disclaimer, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm just redoing what I seen on YouTube. I'm gonna do a simple loop knot with the paracord that it came with, right? And I say you wanna do this to make it a lot easier to take the rope on and off, because quite frankly, you know, I'm not gonna be traveling down the road with my motor connected on the back of my truck. No way, mm -mm, ain't gonna happen. Um, so what I will be doing is just taking off these screws right here, right? You can just take these off, boom, and just pop it, keep this in the truck, okay? So, get your paracord, do a loop knot, put it through like that, right? Get the other end, put it through your loop, and so. It's the same concept when you put the flags on the back of your kayak, right? Like that, and just kind of pull down. See that? All right, so what seems to be popular is the double pulley system, okay? So next you're gonna come behind this bar and through that little ring, right? After you come through the ring, you're gonna go back up again to the top loop. Put it through. So, okay. Then you're gonna go once again back under the bar here and through your loop again. This gives that extra tension to help pull this up, okay? You have a little small hole right there. Put your cord through there. All right, and as you can see, give a little bit more tension to be able to pull it up. Now this clip, they say, when you first initially get the clip, um, apparently it's pretty sturdy, right? So it locks into place pretty hard. You gotta break it in a little bit. Initially, um, you might have to use your paddle or a stakeout pole to push this down and lock it to place. Once it loosens up a little bit, you can hit high speed on your big speed and the motor will just kind of lock itself in place. As of now though, we've got it locked in. So like I can say, from the front of the boat should be easier, but you just throw some tension and pull. That's it. Once again, with the water, it's gonna slow it down so either power paddle, power pole, stakeout pole, and push it down, okay? Or, once again, you can hit high speed on your Bisbee and the motor can lock itself into place. Now, what do we do with the rest of this cord? What I'm gonna do is take a calabiner, right? That's so. I'm gonna do a small uni to uni on the calabiner. Right, whatever knot works best for you. This reminds me of fishing. So do when I say uni to uni, it's just a uni knot. So go through right there, make a loop right there, like that. Let's look up uni to uni lot to see this in slow motion. Go through my loops maybe a couple of times. I'm not gonna do nothing too crazy because once again. When I'm packing up, I wanna be able to take this off easily and just pull, just like that, right? Because I'm gonna take this off. Once I take this off, once I'm going, you know, back to my truck, I'm done fishing, we'll pull the rope through, come back out, the loop knot, just take off the string, good to go, remove your motor. 
All right, so on my Hobie, there's multiple ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it on mine, just by off the link. And, you know, let me get out of the camera and I'll show you the destination on how we're gonna map our way to the front of the kayak. All right, y'all, so from the back of the boat, what I'm gonna do is come through my little hole over here. Now, in some kayaks, you know, you can put like a rain. Even the Bixby, it has, it came with like a little grip thing where if you drill your holes in here, the line will kind of like, it will hold it like that and you just pull it up. I don't want to drill any holes in my kayak, so it is what it is. So once again, coming through underneath here, right, with the calibrator. Now, two ways you can do this, okay? Now, right now, boom, it's in the up position. When my seat is right here, right, when I got it locked in, I'm just gonna put it on the clip of my seat. You know, we have a little thread thing on our seat, with a little line, whatever, right there. So I can easily just grip it and just pull it like this, right? Now, to lock my motor up, we're gonna come up here. That's why we have the carabiner, <laughs> carabiner, and pull it up here to snap into place. Just like that. And um, once again, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm just reinventing what I've seen on other YouTube channels. Boom. Right? Now my motor's gonna be in an upright position. I'll come y'all, show y'all here. This little down over carabiner. Um, I got inspired by this by seeing a video from RS Angler, so shout out to him on that. Get the reference. But let me give y'all a closer look. All right, I had to get a better grip for my camera. So just snap it into place like that and you're in an upright position. So that's it, y'all. Um, once again, once I'm ready to pack up, I'm just gonna remove this, untie this uni to uni, pull my line through here, take off the loop knot, move all the rope, unscrew these, just whoop, 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 take my power pole off. <sighs> There's some better videos on how to do this. I just wanna show you my version. All right, y'all, let's go. All right, y'all, first thing first, something I want to address. I posted a TikTok the other day, and I just had my Bixby in the back stone in just like this because I was trying to, you know, take it out to a quick test run before the sun went down. People were freaking out. They are like, oh, this huge battery is taking up all your space in the back. Yeah, I just threw it back there, but clearly, you can always adjust it as needed. Whether you're pulling up here, you still have enough space for a crate, all right? Obviously, you can also... Turn it sideways like this, right? Then you have even more space for whatever you want to put back here, okay? You have a little slot back here where you can put stuff as well. If you want to try to modify even more, where if you want to lift it up, like that, snap it into place. So yeah, yeah, the battery's big, but it, it can be adjusted. You know what I'm saying? Don't freak out. We're still good. We still have plenty of space for your beer, um, your kids, your dog, whatever. All right, so let's go ahead and get it launched and hit the water. All right, y'all, successful deployment. Um, so, spoiler alert, man, I came out here maybe around 6.30. I was really trying to get this video done, but unfortunately the sun went down, so it got too dark. So I did a little, you know, maiden voyage yesterday. I learned three things. I made three mistakes yesterday. Total user error, nothing against Bixby. <sighs> Number one, my kickstand. Hobie has a big block that you can put on the back of your handle, so when you unload your kayak, you know, it doesn't mess up your rudder, okay? I had this kayak for three years. In three years, I have never forgotten to take it off that kickstand. Uh, I drove around for two hours with this Bixby, with that block on the damn kickstand. Didn't realize until I came back to the boat ramp. Number two, for three years, when I pedal, I am used to moving, right? My brain has been conditioned that if my feet are moving, my boat is moving. But if my feet are stopped, my boat is stopped. So I decided to make a TikTok yesterday. You may have seen it, may have not. And um, as I'm doing my TikTok, you know, my feet are chilling, right? The bitch be doing this job. I'm turning around to get the back shot. 
asked me why I turned around and didn't realize how fast I was going and I almost hit a bridge, okay? I almost ran into the wall. Luckily, the Bixby has a kill switch. I hit that, boom. Put this big boot up, boom. Stop myself, all right? Lesson learned from that was do not tick tock and drive, okay? Lesson number three. Um, when you start your Bixby, the first 60 seconds and you're thinking, this is trash, I'm not moving, this thing is super slow, make sure that you actually drop the motor into the water. Didn't do that yesterday either. So we had some little bugs yesterday and um, I'm feeling confident I'm gonna come back, have a more successful day. Yesterday it was glass, now we got some wind going. So I don't know how it's gonna affect the actual test today. Um, I have a few specific tests that I wanna test out. Of course, what you're here for the speed test. You see what the speed test look like. Um, number two, noise pollution, how noisy is it? Number three, turning radius stuff like that number four the reverse the reverse work number five is battery life okay now spoiler alert with battery life when you buy your bixby a big sheet says in order to calibrate your battery you need to exhaust it and run it all the way down two full cycles i did that man so when i came out here yesterday pretty much running top speed it died about two hours into my test disclosure when you get your battery, Bixby advised that you charge it up fully the first time that you use it. I didn't do that, okay? Um, I was trying to make sure I catch some sunlight to finish this video. I just plugged it in, went out and went. It had six bars on it, so I thought it was full. Who knows? Um, so yeah, so we're gonna do another endurance test today. I do got my fishing rod and see if we can get a fish at the end of this video to complete the review. But other than that, it's all about texting the Bixby. Um, let's go ahead and hit the water, let go. All right, y'all, so let's first talk about deployment of the actual Bixby. Um, with the clothing line or bungee cord a modification i did is i got this big handle at academy for like five bucks got attached y'all saw that on the install video part nice handle because you got to really rip it to pull it out of that lot and etc so i got that so once you take off that you know it should drop all right so right now it's not in that clip, right? It's kind of sitting right here. Like I told you, it, it might take a little while to break it in that you can actually get it in a lot easier. You can either go at full speed to see if it locks into place. If it doesn't lock into place, you can use your paddle or my stakeout pole. Yesterday I used my stakeout pole. Let's see if it works with the top speed. Let's see if it works, hold on. On the PP768 battery, if you press it twice, one in two seconds, it should go full speed, press it again, 13 speed, warp speed, let's see. And warp speed. All right. Okay, so it's not snapping into place as expected. This is only the second time I used it. So what I'm gonna do is, my stakeout pole. I'm just gonna give it a little tug. That's so. up. There we go. Now it's locked into place. Perfect. I know that's gonna be annoying initially, but you know, there's a grace period that eventually that clip will be able to lock in a lot sooner and quicker. All right, let's hit the water. All right, so like I said, the Bixby has 12 speeds. Um, the P battery, the PP768 has 13 speeds, 13 warp speed. So what we'll do, it's first speed number one this is the trolling speed it has set all right here we go all right so with the current speed number one is about 1.6 miles an hour okay let's go to number two number two Sitting at two miles an hour. Now, another disclaimer, y'all. Of course, the speed is going to be different for everyone, based off of the type of kayak that you have, based off of how much gear you have on your boat, and based off of how big the angler is. Right? I'm 220 pounds. Okay, so if you got it in the same kayak and you weighed 120 pounds, you're going to go faster than I'm currently going. But vice versa, if you weigh 320 pounds, you're going to go slower than I'm going as well. So just take that into consideration. So this is speed number two. Number three, 
sitting about 2.2, 2.3. Four, five, six, seven, to that three point one, eight, about three point two. Nine, three point four, ten, set three point six, eleven, three point seven, four, twelve, top speed. And at 3.8, I think this is the high speed at 13. 3.9, four miles an hour. 4.1, 4.2. All right, so 13 speed is about the top speed. Doing about 4.2 miles an hour on that particular one. It's going to turn it around. So about 4.2 miles an hour unassisted. All right, so next up what I want to do is now use the pedal drive along with the motor to see if it makes a difference. All right, y'all, so next up we're going to do the speed test with the Mirage Drive um, Assist. Another quick thing as well, uh, something I tested out yesterday, it doesn't matter if you take the Mirage Drive out. It might actually make it move a little slower because you'll have like whole water, or water coming through your hole. It doesn't make a difference. If you lock your fence into place like this, if we can we have a little hook right here we can snap it and my fans will go up against the hull right it doesn't make a difference if you just have the fins at a neutral position like this it doesn't make a difference right so the mirage um, in or out lock doesn't make a difference with the speed from what i saw but next up let's go ahead and get the speed test with the mirage drive assist all right y'all here we go we'll start at speed number one What I'll do is this a natural assist of hot on the pedal. So on speed number one, doing about 2.1 with the pedal assist. Okay. I'm not gonna go through all the speeds because you know it's gonna take forever. Alright, trying to do my natural cadence with my foot. So about 2.6 speed number one. Let's go to six halfway. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, so this is speed number six, medium speed. Doing about 3.3. 3.5, so about 3.5 and 3.6. Just put my natural cadence of pedaling. Next, we're gonna go top speed. There you go. All right. Here's top speed with assist. All right. I'm just pedaling in regular, nothing crazy. Doing about 4.6, 4.5, 4.5 with pedal. All right. So next, I'm about to pedal as hard as I can to see what the top speed we can get. Now most kayaks, based off of the hull, have like a natural top speed. I think with the Hobie, it's like five miles an hour. You really can't go faster than five miles an hour unless you put like a gas motor on here. Let's see what we can do. Here we go. 5.1. 5 5.2, 5 5.3. 5 5.5. 5 5.8, 5 can we get six? Can we get six? Come on, come on. 5.8. 5.6. I don't think I can get six. Oh man, I'm tired. Here we go. 
going seven. I'm trying to get six, y'all. Oh. All right, so we topped out at 5.8 miles an hour. Whew, it's a little burn. Topped out at 5.8 miles an hour with the assist drive. So it definitely makes a difference. Unassisted, I believe we topped out at what, four miles an hour? With pedal assist, 5.8. There's a storm coming. When your baby mama is chasing you, hit that pedal drive assist and you're good to go. All right, so next up, catch my breath and um, we'll do some more tests. All right, y'all, so my OCD really can't accept the fact that we hit a top speed of 5.9 miles an hour. I'm on six. So I'm about to kill myself to do the worst speed on Bixby and pedal assist drive hit six miles an hour. I think I can do it. I'm gonna regret this later. I'm gonna absolutely regret this later. Okay, let me get my speedometer up. Here we go, y'all. I'm trying to get six. We got the wind to our back, going towards the current. Here we go. Here we go. Get six, baby. Get six. Come on. Come on. Come on. Five point seven six, baby. Give me six. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Five point eight. Five point nine. Two. Seven six. Five point eight. Four. Come on. Come on. Oh my God. Shop at everyday low prices on a huge selection of furnishings. Okay. Five point nine. I'm happy with that. All right. So next up, it has three reverse speeds. Um, I think it will come in handy, man. If you're going towards a piling, like at the Galveston Causeway where I almost lost my life, boom, hit reverse. So we'll try first speed number one. All right. I'm still getting pushed towards the current. So quite honestly, even though the current's going that way, my speed number one going back is keeping me like stationary. It's almost like a a spot lock it's not a spot lock big speed does not have a spot lock but it is keeping me kind of stationary in one spot but i am slow and it's starting to move backwards okay cool speed number two. Oh yeah now we're moving yeah definitely moving and speed number three Put it in reverse, Terry. Put it in reverse, Terry. All right, so reverse definitely does work on a kayak. Nice. Thumbs up. All right, next up, the turning radius, okay? Now, before I even get started, hope he doesn't have the best rudder in the world, right? Even with the pedal assist, I have to like work my rudder to really sometimes get it to turn, okay? So let's put that disclaimer out there. Um, I did notice yesterday that when you do use the Bixby and my handles, my rudder, to turn, it takes wide turns. I'm talking about like a like an uncle at a barbecue, showing up at a barbecue in a Cadillac, you know what I'm saying? He just kind of, so it's a kind of real long turn. But honestly, if you turn off the engine and just pedal real quick, you can get sharper turns, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll do top speed and see how far I can turn. So we're going to go war speed. go all right so here we go and turn rudder so we got respond right it doesn't turn on a dime but it's definitely turning I'm estimating it's, it's taking about uh, what about 15 about a 15 to 20 yard turn before we head it the other way but it does what it has to do. All right, y'all, there you have it, man. That is the test on the water. If I had to rate Bixby, I would give it a, 
I'll say a 4.9 out of 5 stars. Why not 5? The thing that would give this motor 5 stars, number one, if they can hit 5 miles an hour unassisted. We did 4, so you know, beggars can't be choosers. Um, I'm used to this doing my pedal drive, so I don't really hear a lot of noise when I do that. So, you know, when you have this little motor, it's got has like a little humming sounds that kind of go throughout the boat. So, you know, if it can be a little more quieter, yeah. Those two things will make it 5 out of 5 stars. But other than that, the Bixby is a game changer. It is an absolute game changer. So, would I recommend it? Absolutely. So much so, check out the link to check out their products. I'll probably put it in the description or pin the comment in this video. It's a game changer. It's expensive. Do not get it twisted. It is expensive, but I truly believe that it is worth the money. Um, as far as the battery life, so far so good, man. I've been out here for about an hour doing my tests. Um, we're at five out of six bars still remaining. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say, y'all. <laughs> if you have any questions about it, let me know below. I can see if I can figure it out. If you want to do some, if you want to see me do some different tests, let me know. We'll make it happen. But yeah, man. So thanks for tuning in. I know it was a long video. Um, shout out Bixby for um, creating a great product. I'm happy with it. Um, if you like this video, make sure you comment that you liked it. Make sure you like the video and also make sure you subscribe. Once again, my name is Raynell Roy with Fishing Trips. It's been real, y'all. Peace.